Okay, the short answer is, it depends. You can pretty much wear anything these days, so don't let some random guy on the internet tell you what you can or cannot wear. Thing is, the common menswear advice you hear for beginners is to match the elegant lines of an Oxford with a suit, or a sport coat and odd trouser combo. Makes sense, right? Elegant shoes with elegant clothes, and casual shoes with casual clothes. And therefore, a casual Oxford is supposedly an oxymoron to be avoided. But if you're like me and like to mix classic menswear with workwear and vintage military pieces, then incorporating Oxfords into your casual fits is just another way to blur the lines between the genres of clothing. All you gotta do is to pay attention to the few details that make your Oxfords as casual as possible. Let's use this pair from Velasca as an example. First, the uppers. When going casual, suede and nuba can light brown and tan come to mind. Dark brown suede works too, but dark brown calf leather suits my wardrobe better. Personally, I find anything black too hard to pull off as a casual Oxford, but if that's your gen, then more power to you. Next, the broguing. Porto brooks feel too dressy for me, but anything more casual like a semi broke wingtip or long wing is ideal. And although this shoe is big stitch which is theoretically sleeker than a good year or hand welt, the fake welt here is desirable as it creates a chunkier silhouette that leans into the country vibe of the broguing. Other details like a vibrant rubber sole as opposed to a leather sole, a round almond toe, a shorter last, and a taller vamp also contribute to a more casual shoe. Lastly, this is more of a rule for me but polishing brooks makes them dressier so it's a no-go for me, especially if I'm dressing them down. Of course, I nourish them with leather cream so there'll always be a little bit of shine but it's otherwise less attention grabbing than a mirror polish. So, if you agree that this is a casual Oxford, then how should you go about styling it? Well, I'd say in general, just treat them like any other suede derbies, boots, or loafers. In a smart slash business casual office, I'd pair them with pleated wool trousers and an OCBD. For accessories, a vintage Omega and when it gets chilly, a vintage OG 108 flannel or bushet. Steel blue chinos work too, but if you want to dial down the formality, you can go with a long sleeve navy polo. Occasionally with a monochromatic outfit, I like to play with proportions so an oversized denim jacket like this Lee Rider jacket helps to do just that. And if you want to push the boundaries a little further, these British Army fatigue pants are a hidden gem. Much like a modern sartorial trouser, they've got a high rise, side adjusters, and a clean neckline. I think it's fine by itself with any collared top but it feels a little unbalanced with a t-shirt. So I prefer layering a collared outerwear over it, like this trucker jacket. For something more basic, you can't go wrong with dark indigo jeans and a pig polo. And if your style leans more rakish, you can always pop the polo collar over a jungle jacket. Also works with a safari or chore jacket. Okay, fun fact. Apparently in Japan, drawstring pants like these are called chef pants. And it's kind of a thing there, though I've never seen any chefs wearing them. Anyway, classic menswear purists will hate me for this, so feel free to dislike this video if you do. But I think these Oxfords contrast well with the relaxed silhouette of the pants, along with a one-piece collar popover to keep things sartorial. Speaking of which, check out my top 5 favourite sartorial shirts for summer. Or if you're more of a jeans guy, watch me burn these jeans from Uniqlo. Until next time, stay subtle.